Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Karen Sorry. I am from Kyiv, Ukraine. I work as a technical writer for the company Kozak Labs Limited. We are a British Ukrainian company with an office of an R&D in Kyiv. So basically we develop our tools, secure cryptographic encryption tools uh, in Kyiv. We create libraries that uh, can help you encrypt and manage permissions using encryption and cryptography. Uh, even also I thought, well, uh, I will document our tools and uh, we will have our developer portal and documentation, API documentation. Even though the trend is currently receding, I thought that I'd need to mention that crypto has nothing to do with like cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, blockchain, whatever. Uh, cryptography is serious math and serious science. And cryptography is also security. And what is GDPR basically versus API documentation? It's enforcing some kind of standard of security onto your documentation. And what is API towards GDPR? This documentation is something that can make a GDPR more doable, more understandable for your readers. And more secure. And security is love. Like, well, a person working in security, I cannot just express my love to things that are secure and work well and will not get you compromised. But unfortunately, in the business, the things are a bit, little bit different. Something like this. So after trying to talk people into making things secure, we have to compromise sometimes. So at least better security is still love. It's still something that people try to make things not as bad as they usually are. And to be honest, when GDPR came into power, we celebrated, like cryptographers. Everyone was panicking and we were celebrating because, yay, finally, we can put our tinfoil hat on, we can share the tinfoil hats to everyone who wants to get more secure and tell them that JDPR is love, 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 love. Uh, but is it? Uh, how actually did JDPR come into being? The governments of the European Union, European Parliament, they all get tired of all those data leaks. Like, you know, Uber, Yahoo, um, Equifax, Facebook, they all leak data. Not somebody's data, your data. Who got logged out of Facebook recently because of the data breaches? Who got, yeah, I said at least one hand. So the government decided they wanted to make things more secure for people. And another thing, a small quiz. Who knows what this is? So? No, not quite, but not so that. It's the hit mobile phone of 1996. Like, the best phone you could buy, the most trendy. It was cooler than an iPhone back then. The iPhone also got introduced in 2007. You know what the problem is? The previous data regulation was introduced in 1995, before that trendy smartphone, smartphone, before the iPhone. So we were basically living for 20 years or more, like to, until this May, with highly, highly outdated laws that concerned data privacy and the privacy of users. I think that's scary. And another thing, like, uh, another short survey. Who of you clicked the I agree button without reading the license agreement, without reading the terms? Well, raise your hands. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, cool. A few years back, uh, two companies in Europe carried out um, research in Great Britain. One company created a mobile device that was just basically uh, sending out Wi Fi, sharing Wi Fi. I think it was a bus, bus stop. And another company wrote software which just appeared on screen of your mobile device and asked, are you agreeing to uh, this and this and this and this? So if you agree, you get Wi-Fi. Okay, people agreed. But you know what? One of the points in the agreement was that the people agreeing to use a free Wi-Fi was given their firstborn child for the end of the eternity to use that company. 
Of course, it was just an experiment, and no one was taking away children from people. But it proved how people are messy with their data on the go, how they are not reading the documentation, not reading the uh, things uh, that provide them the right to use the license agreement. Because you know what? Just give me that service, give me that Wi-Fi, give me that app, okay? And that brings us to the vicious circle of ignored documentation, of ignored regulations, of ignored uh, license agreements. We say, ah, nobody's going to read it anyway, so we get a huge, huge, large text of unreadable, just, you know, an unreadable brick of text. People just skim it across, and no one reads it. And you do not put much more detail into it, uh, and you do not put much effort into the text because you know, no one's going to read it. Why? I have other things to do that bring us to people not reading our documentation. Congratulations. So what do we do? Probably this. <laughs> Or maybe there are a way to make our documentation, the API documentation, such that people are going to read. And GDPR is actually the thing that enforces it on us to make it secure, understandable, human. You know, like human language, do you speak it? Why didn't you, all the years before, while you were documenting your APIs, while you were putting just blocks of text that only your developers will understand because it contains a lot of internal lingua, eternal just law cliches, and just not basically caring enough about the documentation. You can put a simple, simple warning instead of a block of text of hieroglyphics. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to confuse anyone. Your task is very simple. Use simple human language for normal humans who are going to use your cool apps and products and create great things with them. You know what? That's basically it for the text part of the documentation and API documentation. Because that's not quite all what's going on, especially on the API portals. The thing is that all the tutorials, all those sandboxes, they have several layers to them. The first layer would be for people to agree or disagree to use it. And that's the explicit consent, the thing that's uh, highly demanded by GDPR. You cannot just, you know, put this I agree, I agree, I agree buttons. No, you have to put the checkboxes. With each checkbox explaining what exactly people agreeing to, gives them the right to withdraw their consent, gives them the right to review it, and to basically understand what's going on with their data. Uh, this is a screenshot of a um, um, Wi-Fi connection, uh, basically free Wi-Fi in some airport. We as security company have such hobby, we uh, try to connect to Wi-Fi at airports and see just what kind of holes and data leaks can result from it. So it's, it was one of our guilty pleasures and things are starting to improve. This is an agreement which basically finally says what you can do and what you cannot do and what will be done to your data, which is a nice improvement. But it was not my screenshot. I'll later provide my own. And what else is going on? So we covered text, like use human language, because there's nothing more you can add. Just use language people are going to read, are going to want to read. Put check boxes and explain what you're taking from people, what you're giving people, what kind of data interactions is taking place. So we have like content, we have your website, CMS, uh, maybe um, like what, design, sandboxes, links, so here's your basic like API portal, right? But let's get under the surface. That's not all. Your technical writers, developers, technical people. So you cannot just, you know, shut your eyes closed and maybe it will all go away. It won't because it also has. The database storing the login info for your users, the database storing the passwords, the database storing all the info you gather from them. We all laugh at this kind of apps, like, ha ha ha, online you can input your credit card info to see if it wasn't compromised. Yeah, see. But, of course it was. So we laugh and laugh and laugh a lot. And then we take away 
people's emails, people's names, people's nicknames, people's addresses, people's phones, and just regard it like, ah, nothing special, not a big deal, that's just an email. It's never just an email. This just thing is covered by GDPR, and email is part of personal data. Personal data is the data that lets you be identified somehow, and it cannot be leaked. It must be regulated, and if you in any way collect user data in your portals, you have to be responsible with it. And what's worse, there's also personal sensitive data. It's data is the uncovering of which will result in serious problems for users. It's like health information, uh, sexual orientation, religious use. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that uh, uh, one of the main uh, healthcare regulations also dates back to 1995, which is nice to know. You know HIPAA. So, well, just do not let your data escape. Okay, another short survey. Who of you has ever, ever, somewhere used the same password and the same email for two different services, like something disposable? Like, yeah, I'm sorry to say, but yeah. Uh, why do we have this pretty rainbow on screen? Because when the passwords you're using for some service, especially if they are not encrypted in a in hash in a proper way, you know, like some services they will send you back one, recover my password, and they just email your password in plain text. It just gives me creeps. Uh, if it's done properly, that even if the service or you are sending out hashed passwords, like a link to re reuse, like not to reuse, a link to redo a password, rehash it again, store it somewhere. If you're using your password twice somewhere, you can use rainbow table attack. It's when a pre-configured table of hash uh, created according to some specifics, you know, like use one lowercase, one uppercase, one special character. So just basically a brute force which goes through a long, 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 long table of possible hashes and tries to match it to your or user's um, credentials. And when they get into one account, they may try to uh, try all of your other accounts or, or users or other accounts and you're going to be screwed if it fits to your banking info or your house info or whatever. And dictionary attack like this pretty book, it's even simpler. It just services malware services that just try all the popular dictionary words and password against your account. So if you use one email somewhere and where you use a very, very easy password like one, two, three for QWERTY, then um, attacker can just use your data on your user's data and try to log into their other services using the info you leaked somewhere on your API portal. Like you're not a company, you're just a small maintainer of a small piece of API documentation and you can still just basically compromise the whole life of your user. Yes, the user is being reckless with using the same password, but you have to think about it and have to care about your users. So, it's never just an email, it's never just a password, it's never just a cookie you collect at your API portal. Use it responsibly, please. Now I'm going to uncover like the great answer to the JDPR universe life everything. Just treat any data as very, very important data because of the reasons I already mentioned. And keep it simple. Don't get into, you know, long, long, long explanations that if your data is being transferred to company A from company X, and just, again, use human language, please. For instance, uh, this is a crypto protocol, a socialist m millionaire protocol, which basically lets two uh, persons compare some numbers. They have a, the popular example is like two millionaires want to find out uh, who is richer, but they do not, to, do not want to share the exact sum they possess. So this protocol allows you to just compare without disclosing numbers. It's a really, really complicated cryptographic formula. Uh, I got it down to a couple of simple drawings and posted it the Halloween article on Medium, like basically it's just two kids who want to compare how many candies they get at Halloween. So even the most complicated cryptography can be explained in a few comics. And anything can be if you just care enough and if you get down to actually understanding it and putting out the core out for your users. So please do it. And by the way, that was a hit article. It hit like 
more than 1,000 1, likes, while the whole, you know, this cryptography niche is like 10,000 people. At your API portals, you, some of you use sandboxes, so please be careful with them, because in sandbox you get exact interaction with your user's data, and your users might interact with your data. And malware, malicious attackers, they can interact with your important data through hacking your sandboxes. So, for instance, how is secure we have ACRA? It's a uh, um, data protection um, suit uh, that uses, uses encryption. And we have this sandbox online, um, which lets people who do not want to code just install it and try how it works, how it encrypts things, decrypts things. And we have an invite only policy for the sandbox because we do not want to have a million of. Possibly, well, for instance, statistically speaking, there can be half a million of um, Chinese young hackers, script kiddies, who are all trying to cut their teeth on our portal. And we were getting really, really weird emails piling up, asking for permission, so we have to monitor it by hand. And if, if we are careless, we can let somebody have an access that they, do not, they cannot have. But we're a security company, we can see it right away. And most people, as I already showed you, the comics with it, um, small animal and security and what people think about security and implementing it properly, you can be hacked through your inbox. So see who's subscribing, how they're subscribing, and what they do on your inbox. And since GDPR asks you to implement security everywhere from the very beginning, sandbox, text, documentation, uh, design, if you implemented security properly somewhere, why not show it? Why not highlight it? We always try to include more warnings than we need to like. In the bottom it has like, please back up your keys, like really, 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 for real. I think it mentioned like, please back up your data, back up your keys three times in the text. Because we understand that people are humans, they can be very smart, but they can be tired. So we have to get, take care of them. And we are writing that we are caring about them and where we are implementing GDPR things, where our products can help implement GDPR things, we just indicate it, because maybe someone will come to your product asking how it can help them with GDPR. So you should put it up on your portals and actually just mention, highlight it. So this is how we can help you and we protect your data too, so we can be useful for each other. Uh, my screenshot of um, airport Wi-Fi, I promised. It just yesterday I had a really long, long layover flight. And I was just, oh, because I connected. And finally, it didn't give me some you know, obscure license agreement. It was a real human offering me real care over my data. Of course, I used all the possible VPN services when I was connecting, but it was a nice change. Because GDPR is and all those regulations are something that help us be safe, us and our users and the whole world, you know. And the funny thing is when the many companies were freaking out about GDPR in the spring of this year, no one knew how to implement it, what to do with it. Uh, there is one really like dark, heavy, uh, goss mm, rock bands, the Fields of Nephilim, or Fields of Nephilim. So, their website, it is a screenshot of the Fields of Nephilim website, was the first ever resource on which I found this GDPR agreement button. So it was a revelation when I realized that sometimes your favorite rock band cares about you more than your banking service. <laughs> so let's sum it up. Here should have been probably, you know, this mm, traditional summary like bullet points, do this, 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 and this, and you'll be secure, you'll be GDPR compliant everywhere, in your documentation, in your product, in your home, everywhere. But no, there is no silver bullet for GDPR. You have to think for yourself. You have to realize when you're taking the user's data, what you're doing with it, why are you taking it? And if you cannot take responsibility for users' data, passwords and emails, don't take this data. And this also makes you very much compliant with GDPR, according to the point that calls up for data minimization. So you do not take what you don't need. And thinking about why you need to implement better security, you'll understand how. So this is your no bullet bullet point for GDPR. And welcome on board, we're 
all now security team now, you know, not just security services. Well, thank you.